What's up, Meta Nerds? This video is all about the Tri Droid Fighter, one of the main starfighters of the CIS. It was manufactured by Kala Designs and Flak Afok Automata Industries, the same people who helped to make the Droidica and provided the fuel for the HMP Droid gunship. At a cost of 30,000 credits, it was one and a half times the cost of the Vulture Droid and half the price of the TIE Fighter. At a length of 5.4 meters, or 18 feet, it was less than half the length of the X-Wing and shorter than a Vulture Droid. At a width of 3.45 meters, or 11 feet, it was about half as wide as a TIE Fighter and not even two Wookiees across. And with a similar height around 3.45 meters, it was less than half as tall as a TIE Fighter and about twice the height of the Vulture Droid. As for our standard unit of the Imperial 1 class Star Destroyer, you could line up 296 Tri Droids from bow to stern. And for some real world comparisons, it was about as long as a Honda Odyssey and about twice as tall. While the F-16 is about three times as long and wide while being just a bit taller. With a top atmospheric speed of 1,050 km per hour or 652 miles per hour, it was the exact same speed as the ARC-170 and the X-Wing while being slower than the TIE Fighter. And like the TIE, it didn't have any shields or hyperdrive. Its armament is one of the things that makes the Tri-Droid Fighter so impressive, with its medium laser cannon, three light laser cannons, and a variable payload of six medium concussion missiles, or six buzz droid containing discord missiles. Not driven by a droid pilot, it was similar to the Vulture and Hyena, and that it had an integrated droid brain that comes as close as possible to removing input lag allowing the fighter to respond to threats as they were picked up by the sensors. By taking a look inside of the ship, we can see where the weapon systems were charged via this port, energizing the power packs that line this area. Fuel was stored in the backside of this arch, injected down into the ion acceleration chamber, and the ions were directed by this nozzle to increase its maneuverability. To power all the computer systems and weapons, this centrally located main reactor was encased in layers of durasteel. These photoreceptor eyes gave it a bug-like appearance, and its communication arrays were located here. The Tri-Droid's main systems were in this gyroscopic core, which kept it level while being incredibly maneuverable, and its higher level transceiver meant that it had a greater range than the Vulture Droid. Some other interesting features are that the laser cannons on its wings allowed them to be slightly adjusted up and down independently, and the main cannon is manufactured by the same line in the DSD-1 Dwarf Spider. As for its history, the first time the Tri-Droid Fighter was deployed was on the outer rim planet of Praesletlin in the year 20 BBY when the CIS tried to capture the Intergalactic Communication Center which would have allowed them to interfere with the Holonet. They stunned the Republic by being able to blow apart the T-19 starfighters of the Planetary Defense Force and even proved difficult for the ace Jedi pilots Saisi Tin and Anakin Skywalker. Their biggest role would be during the Battle of Coruscant, tearing up ARC-170s and taking their fight down to the cities of Coruscant. The Tri-Droids were decommissioned after the execution of the Separatist Council, which led to many pirates and junkers trying to bring them back to life. So that's it for its history, but you definitely want to hear these cool facts and behind the scenes stuff. One of the original concepts for this ship was that it would be shot like a missile from CIS capital ships, attached to boosters that would jettison off and they would continue with their momentum as a starfighter. This idea was thrown out, however, because it would be too confusing on screen with the already chaotic Battle of Coruscant. And the overall look of this ship is based on the skull of one of the most terrifying predators on the Colicoid's homeworld. So that's it for the Tri-Droid Fighter. If you want to connect with us, help support this channel, or get your own copies of the reference material used in this video, be sure to check out the links in the description. Special shout out to our supporters over on Patreon, and be sure to like and subscribe, or click on one of these cards to see our other videos. But most important of all, remember, beware the droids bearing droids, and the force will be with you. Always.